Good evening. We are going to start work today and we are going to actually hopefully get work done as well. So what I'm doing today, at least to start with here, is I need to be able to switch smoothly between two different camera modes. So we've got this camera data, basically. And I need to move all the camera logic, all the logic for actually figuring out where the camera should be. I need to put that inside of something that I can call um, that's not actually on the player proxy actor. And I need to you make it so you can basically have that box and be like, okay, where should I be? And it'll return like, ah, oh, you should be at this location. And then I can linearly interpolate between two different camera modes based on stuff. So let's see exactly what I'm going to need to do in order to do that. So right now I've got the player proxy actor and the player proxy actor has a whole bunch of stuff on it. Um, so let's make sure we check out all our files because of the purpose. Array version control. So let's see, um, well, kind of the gold-plated version of this, I would also pull out all this information so that it was calculated inside of a blueprint class as well. So maybe I want a U-object. Um, nah, pretty much just, we have the assets. I switched the title, yeah. At least I hope I did. <laughs> it never says that it actually successfully updated channel status it just says error every single time so I never know if it actually changes it yeah we're back in C++ today so I think what I need to do is I need to put the camera data off into its own thing Now I could, I could change these functions to take camera data or I could just have like calculate calculate for camera. I can make an, a class that we basically call on which has the camera data and the rest. I think what I want is like calculate for camera. Either that or I could change the camera data class itself to be like calculate and pass stuff in there. I guess the camera itself wouldn't be an awful idea. So let's take a look at that. You got your particle systems working? Excellent. Good job. And I'm just kind of getting started here, so I'm going to be a little slow. <laughs> you got a... I don't... yeah. It's just how, it's how it works sometimes. Characters... All right, so our game data is where actual camera control data is, and the camera control data basically has like all this 
metadata stuff on it. And I think what I want to do is change this game data so that you can call it and that's where we actually calculate the position. So we have like a public public method on it and we're gonna call f vector get position for get position and like delta t I guess we should call update position and then get position or something like that yeah update position and then we'll do like f vector get position get current position and then we need a whole bunch of private variables inside of this now we're we gonna have also the position history and smoothing and all that I don't think we will I guess we have to move all this logic into into it, so I think it's all of this. I'm just trying to think about kind of the best way to organize this stuff. Because if I shove it all into the, you know, the camera data class, then I'm still going to be reaching into the player proxy actor in order to actually do things. Like, I need options. And we don't even have camera asset data. Uh, yeah, this isn't. It's not the best. Like, it'd be nice if this was just a data class. So I think it's more of a we want a calculate for camera data sort of thing. Out of hell with it, let's throw it in here and basically tightly couple the two classes. Why not, right? Let's just see what happens. If you don't have a camera asset, the camera just... Yeah, if you don't have camera data, your camera's just not going to move or do anything. Alright. So get our all of our camera classes, our functions here for this stuff.
All right, so we need determine camera position. Determine camera width, speed, direction offset, calculate offset move speed, determine camera allowance, set extra offset. Um, no, that's not something we need. Right, so dash can game data. Calculate camera extra offset. No, we want this. Set camera data. Get camera data. No, we want this. We also want our print camera values. All right, this is just going to be a mess, basically, that we have to deal with. And we also have to move like all these ridiculous camera position things. <laughs> ah, excuse me. So this is the way you're working on there? That looks pretty cool. So you're doing it in CryEngine? Very nice. With a whole bunch of particles. All right. Well, nice. That, that looks like you got them all moving around and doing crazy stuff. Very cool. I guess we need all of this stuff. Is snap to position in here? No. <laughs> Crying engine will probably see. Yeah, when we were when I was at Amazon, we used a lumberyard, which is very similar to Crying Engine. <laughs> So pretty much this tick camera function needs to be inside of, we need to make this game data here, actually this update position, I guess I should have tick position and get current position as methods here kind of at the start. Okay, we should have f vector. M final position. Or actual position. I 
And the idea is we're basically going in, so we're pulling all this stuff out so that we can transition between two different cameras. So you can basically say like, okay, calculate where the camera should be, calculate the camera should be for this, these two different sets of data. And then we can just like linearly interpolate between those two camera modes. And that way we can like switch from like a close, close in cinematic camera and to a far out camera. And we can do that smoothly and without any crazy shenanigans going on. All right, we need these functions here as well. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I don't know how much I can even say about that whole Amazon Cranger thing. Or how much is accurate that I know. But yeah, I think it's very heavily based on it. And that pretty much when I was working with it, everything said Cryengine. <laughs> and we're, people were actively changing that. So for us to tick the position here, it may be that what I want to do is pass down the player proxy actor or other data that we actually need. So we're going to call tick position with delta t and we're then going to basically set our position yeah we'll call f vector camera position equals m camera data get current position and we're just gonna set it right right there So let's see, we have our one in position here, set camera position. Does anything actually call this? No. Alright, so that's okay. On screen change, we have our aspect ratio, camera aspect ratio, get player proxy. That's fine. We should probably throw this at the bottom of the function here. Get camera data, set camera data, reset extra offset. Ok, 
calculate smooth velocity, calculate Z fix speed. Um, I think we need this calculate Z fix speed to be in here. Snap to position, follow actor, get followed actor, set player proxy, set a camera FOV. Alright, this is looking pretty decent. So now this player proxy actor is a lot simpler. You know, it's pretty much just the player proxy actor and nothing else going too crazy. And then we have all of our logic inside of our Control stuff here, so we're gonna have to look for M camera data. We'll start from the top here. And the good thing is, once I finish up with this camera stuff, I can get back to movement. We've got some interesting stuff. I'll be working on the actual, like, bitey's movement. Um, and not the just, like, collision stuff, but, like, how we actually want the character to accelerate and turn and how that's going to affect animations and all sorts of crazy stuff. So I think what we're going to have to do is when we tick our position, we're going to have to pass in our player proxy actor. And we'll, we'll pass in the owner, kind of like that. I should probably just like save M owner right here. Or should I not? It's kind of lazy to save it. But I don't want to copy paste it everywhere, so let's just do M owner equals owner. This will be update function, temp variables, throw in there. And yeah, we're just doing these this forward declaration syntax here, so we don't actually have to know what the player proxy owner is inside the header file. We just need to know what it is inside of the CPP file. That helps out with our compilation because the compiler only had to construct the actual class the only thing it needs to know is the type of this variable and the type is a pointer to a class so like the, comp the compiler doesn't actually need to know what it is it just it knows what it it doesn't need to know what it points to it just needs to know that it's a pointer so if we have the owner I need to 
initialize that to null pointer. If owner equals null pointer, we're just going to return. Just, you know, let's just save ourselves from crashing if things are screwed up. A player proxy actor actually needs to call. This tick camera needs to call with this. All right, so all these like get actor transform flaws need to do. They need to use like get owner, so m owner. All right, so calculate camera pin, get actor transform. All right, so we have set translation. If in camera data does not equal get rotator, get downward angle. So what we want is we don't actually want a a position. We want like an F transform. Um, I guess we need get current position and get. Get downward angle. And we'll have to combine both of those things. So that means we're going to need. We're going to need a float M downward angle. 20,000 particles at 20 FPS. Is that in full release mode? Or is that just in just in debug or development. Debug mode? Yeah, that's not too bad. Like, debug mode has crazy ridiculous stuff. Like, I don't even develop in debug mode. I'm, I'm developing in development, you know, which is kind of a halfway, halfway release mode just because Debug mode sucks, especially for stuff like particles where it's going to do crazy memory alignment stuff. Like, full debug can just be. It's going to be a pain to get prod working. Well, in all the projects I've worked on, pretty much just the first thing you should do is make sure release mode always works. Because when it doesn't, <laughs> it, it's a huge pain in the ass to get it working again. I guess we don't need the downward angle stuff because we already have it. So this is going to be taking one thing just like that it should be get actor transform and all that all right. we don't want to set the actor transform here we don't need to do this it's going to be um, current position so it's going to be this m actual position equals current position so we should be good there Judging by your typing, it shouldn't be working. Nah, you should always be working. It's like, oh, I'm not drunk. Like, yes, you are. Stop. <laughs> Alright, so basically all these camera data things we can now get rid of. Um, so let's see. 
This is going to be this. So we can get rid of a whole lot of this if code for all this crazy shenaniganry. All right, so we have this like im followed actor, so we're gonna need to be able to call on the player proxy and get followed actor. Is there like get followed? Yes, there is a get followed actor function. So m owner get followed actor, and that's an a dash can entity actor. Let's call it followed actor. I don't know, kind of how I, I work is, even if I'm not having a great day or whatever, it's if you feel like working, do work. That way, when you don't feel like working, you don't have to do work. Pointer to incomplete type. Well, I think we included the player proxy actor age, so it's not incomplete type anymore. All right. Alright, so get followed actor, followed actor, translation, action vector, m1, last, penetration offset, delta t, current position. Alright, so m camera data is null. And this is just going to take a while to refactor all this crazy shenaniganry. So you've got all these particles, is this just a math function or are these, how are these being controlled? But it looks like a whole bunch of sine cosine crazy transforms going with a bunch of what, like a random noise inside of the, the angle or something like that. Or is this all just just moles and divs and adds? Yeah. <laughs> cool. I guess snap to position is something that we should pass in, so we need like a bool snap to position. Should snap to position. So we call 
So it's going to be bool snap equals m owner should snap to position. Yeah, thanks for the, the thing here. All right, so so for every particle in our count, our x is going to be our we're just adding 0.5 to it, multiplying. Also, yeah, hello, care can. Good evening, it is 8 p.m. over here, and we're getting started on, we're still working on some camera stuff, but hopefully we'll finish that up today. We're getting it so we can transition from one camera to another camera uh, smoothly. Where is time in this equation? Like we've got velocity, but we don't have like our velocity we're just plus equaling. Cool. Yeah, velocity is count from the position. Alright, so again we need to grab the followed actor. Okay, well, camera data is no longer null, so we don't need this check in here. So let's keep going down the list. Camera is not null pointer, so we can get rid of all this. Just dynamic zoom, camera data, current velocity, aspect. What is aspect? M camera aspect ratio. So we're gonna need our we're gonna need get camera. Yeah, I guess just get camera component. So you have to throw that here at the bottom. So we're going to need the actual the camera on this thing. So it's just camera. So we end, zoom, delay, start, blah, 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 blah. All right, in camera data does not equal no. We can just get rid of this. All 
Okay, so I got Thaw deck, get Actor Transform, all this stuff. Alright, looking good. So in order to get these things to be able to transform all it, looks like a mantle pro yeah. We did a lot of cool particle stuff in college with uh, our math classes, since it was a private school that was very much focused on computer game programming. Our math classes actually had us write all of our like algorithms and stuff like that in code, and like our demonstrations would be basically particle systems that modeled different equations. So instead of just like having a whole bunch of busy work you know, write out the equations and do proofs a lot of the time. It was like, well, if you can write a, if you can write the thing in code, you understand it. So it was more important for us to be able to code out our math stuff. So it's pretty cool. All right, so determine camera allowance. We're going to need that followed actor again. Right there. I guess I should just say like if followed actor equals null pointer then like we're just gonna return and then I can just get rid of this whole scope here and that'll make it easier to read So let's see. All right, so get rid of all this. Extra magnitude, extra offset. All right, movement, camera data. Alright, so let's just start or continue migrating our code over. Alright, so followed actor is going to be here. Pretty good. So we want the M camera data. Because basically anywhere where this exists, we need to get rid of it. Because we are now the actual camera data class. So we just, we're just getting rid of all this stuff. And this is also another big part of development if you're going to change a whole bunch of stuff. You know, sometimes it's just boring and tedious. 
four. And the reason I'm not just control, you know, like control R find and replacing this is because I'm trying to just look at the code as well. See if there's anything else that kind of jumps out when I'm going through the whole thing that I need to change or that maybe won't work or something else. And the ortho width stuff there might be a bit of a problem. So let's actually compile it and see what we get at the moment. Man, I'm totally out of caffeine. What is going on here? I got no more monster energy drinks. Today is today is a bad day. So all this is compiling. I'm going to look through a little bit and So let's just fix all these things that are busted. Alright. I guess we're never we're not using an orthographic camera anymore, so we're not calling set ortho width. So we can just get rid of that. I guess that's also something we need. We need our game data to actually have an initialize function.
which should initialize all of our variables, like these. So M camera data does not equal null. Cool, okay, that works. So that's fixed. All right, we'll compile it again so we get a whole nother list of errors to fix. I guess I should be calling tick camera with zero, and that'll do it. I guess I need to call set extra offset. Um, we need to call it on the actual camera data. So it should be like this. And the initialize should. We're calling it every frame, so it should be OK. Reset extra offset. MKMR data does not equal null pointer. Then MKMR data reset extra offset.
So camera data. All right. I guess maybe we also need a copy from camera sort of thing. Because like when we switch our camera data we actually want to take all the basic information that we already have from the previous camera and shove it into the next camera. Uh, so I need a copy an initialize and then like a void copy. I guess maybe initialize should take another a pointer to another camera object. Camera control data. Otherwise, what I need to do is I need to like copy every single one of these freaking values. Like that's that's pretty ridiculous, though. And if we don't copy them, then we have major problems. So maybe I should shove all of this crap off onto like another data structure, which would be like camera temporary data. Ugh, that's pretty rough. So it'll be just you or just view camera temp data. And I guess I could use a struct for it, but whatever. And I need to put all the temporary variables on, on it. So all of this stuff needs to go under this camera temporary data sort of thing. And we should have an initialize. It's like everything should be public. because we're going to be accessing it from the other class and we need an initialize on it. And this initialize is basically the camera temp data initialize which is going to set all this stuff up. And we call initialize, we're going to call um, our camera temp data is going to be private member down here. So I'm going to call it mt or mtemp, temp dad, temp data. So mtemp data dot initialize. And if other does not equal null pointer, we're just going to say mtemp data equals other mtemp data. And that should use the copy uh, to copy every.